everybody. Oh, we froze. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the City of Northland story time in our, oh, in our land of make-believe. I'm so glad you're here today. I am going to talk to you today about being scared. I'm a scaredy cat, just like some of you. This is Miss Kelly from the city of Northland, or AKA Scaredy Cat. I don't know about all of you scaredy cats and kittens out there, but this scaredy cat sometimes gets super scared of all kinds of things. And that's right, big cats get as scared as little kittens do too sometimes. And you never know what it's going to be. We have had, oh, let me find my stuff. Oh my goodness. We have had some scary looking skies in the last couple of days, and we've heard some thunder, and we have had some rain that is falling and going. So between the thunder and the rain, I have just been so scared. So I wanted to read some books to you about what to do when you're feeling scared too. And I have one of my favorite books and you know that Miss Kelly always says they're my favorite books because I have so many of them. This one that we're going to read today is a little golden book called The Monster at the End of This Book starring lovable furry old Grover who is not scary at all and he says hello everybody Let's see what Grover's got going on. This is a very dull page. What is on the next page? This says that the monster at the end of this book is by John Stone and illustrated by Mike Smolin. What did that say? On that first page, what did it say? Did it say there would be a monster at the end of this book? It did. Oh, I'm so scared of monsters. My tail, my tail's a tingling. My senses are going. I'm so scared. How about you? Let's see what happens. Shh, listen, I have an idea. If you do not turn any of these pages, we will never get to the end of this story. And that's good because there's a monster at the end of this book. Please don't turn the page. You turned the page! Oh no! He's so scared! Maybe you do not understand. You see, turning the pages will bring us to the end of this book. And there is a monster at the end of this book. But this will stop you from turning the pages. See, I, Grover, am tying these pages together so you will not be able to turn the page. Let's see. You turned another page! You do not know what you're doing to me. Stop turning the pages! There, I, Grover, am nailing this page to the next one so you will not be able to turn it. And we will not get any closer to the monster at the end of this book. Bum, bum, bing, bum, clunk, clunk. Look at how hard Grover's working. Shall we turn the page? All right, all right, all right. Do you know that every time you turn a page, not only do you get us closer to the end of the book where there is a monster, but you are making a terrible mess. We're going to turn it again. This will stop you from turning the pages. A heavy, solid, strong brick wall. I would just like to see you try and turn this page. I'm going to use my strong hands. Do you know that you are very strong? The next page is the end of this book. And there's a monster at the end of this book. <gasps> I am so scared. I am shaking. Please, please do not turn the page. Please, 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 please. Look at that. We are at the end of the book, and the only monster there is me. I, lovable, furry old Grover, 
am the monster at the end of this book, and you were so scared. I told you there was nothing to be afraid of. Oh, I am so embarrassed. Poor Grover, he got so scared, and guess what? There was nothing to be afraid of because the monster at the end of the book was him. What a surprise. Sometimes we get scared just because we're surprised when somebody jumps out and they say, boo, oh my goodness, what do you do? Do you shiver? Do you shake? Do you quake in your shoes? Sometimes I do when I'm feeling like a scaredy cat. Well, Grover was sure scared today, but I'm gonna tell you a secret. I have things that I'm scared of too. Sometimes I get super scared when I see a slinky snake going by. That makes me super scared. Sometimes I might see a squeaky, squeaky mouse, and that makes me so scared, even though I'm a cat. It's just so scary. But I have some things that I can do when I get super scared, and so can you. I have another story that I want to tell you, and it's about another monster. And I have a little puppet that I would like to show you. So I'm going to find my puppet, and then we are going to tell the story. I have to find my puppet. I'm so scared. I don't even know where my puppet is, and that makes me super scared. So. I am going to look over here, and I'm going to look over there, and what will I do if I can't find my puppet, and all of you are waiting, and you're waiting for me, and I am just so scared. Oh no, oh no. I will have to look at another book with you. I'm going to get my book out. Let's see what it says. Oh, this book is about another friend of Scaredy Cat's. Scaredy Cat has a really good friend whose name is Scaredy Squirrel. Hi, Scaredy Squirrel. Tell everybody hello. And we have an awesome story from Scaredy Squirrel today. So I would like you to join me for Melanie Watts' book, Scaredy Squirrel. And then we'll visit with Scaredy again in just a minute. And Scaredy, is a lot like Scaredy Cat. So we're going to tell you about Scaredy Squirrel, a little bit about him. Here's about him in a nutshell. He never leaves his nut tree. It's way too dangerous out there, he believes. He might encounter germs or poison ivy or even sharks. If danger comes along, he's prepared. He has antibacterial soap. He has band-aids and a parachute. He is all ready, but when things get really shaken up in the book, it's going to force Scaredy Squirrel to step out of his box and do something that makes him very, very scared. So let's find out about his nutty adventure. There's a warning at the front of this book. Warning, Scaredy Squirrel insists that everybody wash their hands with antibacterial soap before they read this story. Scaredy Squirrel by Melanie Watts. Scaredy Squirrel never leaves his nut tree. This is the unknown outside of his tree. He'd rather stay safe in his familiar tree than risk venturing out into the unknown. The unknown can be a scary place for a little animal like him. A few things that Scaredy Squirrel is scared of. Tarantulas. Eek, there's a spider. I hope Scaredy Squirrel doesn't see it. Poison ivy. Green Martians. Killer bees. Germs. And sharks. Sharks. Scary sharks. So, Scaredy Squirrel is perfectly happy staying right where he is in his nut tree. The advantages of never leaving his nut tree are, he has a great view, he can look around from his tree, he has plenty of nuts, it's a safe place, there are no tarantulas, no poison ivy, no Martians, no germs, and no sharks. 
The disadvantages of never leaving the nut tree are, it's the same old view every single day. The same old nuts and the same old place. See what's going to happen. I'm feeling a little scared for him. On Monday, scaredy squirrel's in his tree. On Tuesday, scaredy squirrel's in his tree. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, scaredy squirrel is in his nut tree. Every day is the same. Everything is predictable and all is under control. That's important to some folks. Some cats and kittens need a little bit more control, huh? Scaredy squ squirrel, ah, tongue tied. Scaredy squirrel's daily routine, 6.45, wake up, I'm awake. 7 a.m., get a nut. 7.15, look at the view. 12 noon, eat a nut. 12.30, look at the view. 5 p.m., eat a nut. 5.31, look at the view. 8 p.m., go to sleep. Good night, scaredy squirrel. What a day. But let's just say, for an example, that something unexpected did happen. You can rest assured that scaredy squirrel is prepared. He has his first aid kit always available. We're going to turn the page. Oh, a few items in scaredy squirrel's emergency kit, a parachute, bug spray, a mask and rubber gloves, a hard hat, antibacterial soap, calamine lotion, a net, band-aids, and sardines. I think that's for the sharks. What to do in case of emergency according to Scaredy Squirrel. Step one, panic. Step two, run away. Step three, Get the first aid kit. Step four, put on kit. Step five, look at the exit plan. Step six, exit the tree. If there is absolutely, definitely, truly no other option. The exit plan, note to self, get parachute. Watch out for green Martians and killer bees in the sky. Note to self, don't land in the river. I don't want to get my fur all wet, and neither does Scaredy Squirrel. Use sardines to distract the sharks. That's what I thought, too. Exit three, note to self, look out for that poison ivy and for the tarantulas roaming around on the ground. Exit four, note to self, keep in mind germs are everywhere. What will he do? See, with his emergency kit in hand, Scaredy Squirrel watches day after day. He watches until one day on a Thursday at 9.37 a.m., he saw something. What is it? It's a bee! It's a bee! It's a bee! What should he do? A killer bee appears! Scaredy Squirrel jumps in panic knocking his emergency kit to out of the tree and right onto the ground. That was not part of his plan at all. Scaredy Squirrel jumps to catch his kit. He quickly regrets this idea. His parachute is in the kit. But something incredible happened. He started to glide. Scaredy Squirrel is no ordinary squirrel at all. He's a flying squirrel. He feels overjoyed, adventurous, carefree, alive, until he lands in a bush. Scaredy squirrel, squirrel forgot all about the killer bee, not to mention the tarantulas, the poison ivy, the green Martians, the germs, or the sharks. He fell in the tree and he played dead. He closed his eyes for 30 minutes. An hour later, two hours later, he's still playing dead. Finally, Scaredy Squirrel realized that nothing horrible was happening to him in the unknown today. So he decided to get up and go back to his tree. 
All this excitement had inspired Scaredy Squirrel to make some drastic changes to his life. Let's see what those were. Well, oh, it's hard when you got fur fingers to turn your pages. Scaredy Squirrel's new and improved daily routine. 6.45, wake up. 7, eat a nut. 7.15, look at the view. 7.37, jump into the unknown. 9.45, play dead. 11.45, return home. 12 noon, eat a nut. 12.30, look at the view. 5 o'clock, eat a nut. 5.30, look at the view. 8 p.m., go to bed. But he did jump into the unknown, didn't he? P.S. As for the emergency kit, Scaredy Squirrel is in no hurry to pick it up. Can you see why? A little poison ivy it's laying in. And there he goes. He missed the river. The end. How proud I am of Scaredy Squirrel. I am so happy that Scaredy got out of his box and decided to do something new in the adventure. He never knew that he was a flying squirrel until he tried. He didn't know that he could fly. So we can say, way to go, Scaredy Squirrel. High five. I am super proud of you today. There are some things that we can do when we feel really, really scared too. I feel less scared when I have my friends by me. Sometimes when I feel really scared, I have to ask for help, right? Even big cats need some help sometimes. And so when I'm feeling super scared, I'm going to find my friend or I'm going to find my safe grown-up. And I'm going to tell my grown-up that I'm feeling scared. I'm going to talk about it with my grown-up. And that's going to help me feel a little bit better. A lot of times when something's scary, all we got to do is just try and remind ourselves it might not be so bad. And I can say to myself, I am brave. I am safe. I am strong. And I can try. And so can you. So sometimes things seem so scary that we don't want to do them at all. Right, Scaredy Squirrel? I know. He feels that way too. But remember, there's something else that you can do. Something that I like to do when I'm super scared. And sometimes things happen and oh my goodness, a big old bug might fly in and land on my head. And what can I do? I don't know. I love Super Grover. I might think to myself, what would Super Grover do if there was a bug on his head? And then I can do what Super Grover might do, which is to say, go away, bud. Go away, scary bud. I don't need you today. And that helps me feel better because I am able to take care of it all by myself. And now, instead of my tail tingling, my tail feels a little happy. I don't feel quite as scared anymore. So there might be something that you like to do when you feel scared. And I want you to do that when you are feeling scared. And maybe that is that you have a favorite blanket that you can hold. Or maybe you have a favorite kitty cat that you like to squeeze. I know that I had a favorite kitty when I was little. My kitty was a pink kitty and she made me feel so much better when I was scared. So sometimes when my grown-up wasn't there, I might squeeze my pink kitty instead and she would make me feel better. So I want you to practice doing something this week that makes you feel scared. There's lots of scary stuff going on out there in the world and we got to know that we can be super brave and we can get through it together. So I want to say, please come back and see me again next week. I was so scared to come and see you today without Scuba Steve or without my friend Scaredy Squid, but he'll be back next week so that he can read a story with us. And I can't wait to see you then, and neither will he. And so, until then, try not to be so scared. And if the thunder is crashing and the lightning is flashing, what I want you to do is take a big breath and breathe it out.
and say to yourself with a pat on the back, I'm brave, I'm a big kitty, and I can take care of this. Until next week, hugs and love from the city of North Glen. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Oh, now I can't get it shut off. Even more scary.